Hello, I'm Phil Swallow and I'm going to take you on a tour today. We're going to go for a walk from Westminster Bridge, where I am now, and we're going to head along the southern bank, passing Lambeth Bridge and ending up at Vauxhall. So, Westminster Bridge. It is one of the oldest actual crossings of London. Uh, prior to it being built and established, you had to go to London Bridge, that was very busy, or Kingston, which of course is a long way out. And it's painted green, it's very green. And there's a connection there because the colour of the seats, the leather seats in the House of Commons, are green. So the House of Commons is the nearest. This is the Palace of Westminster behind me, or the Houses of Parliament. And your House of Commons is nearest, and there's a little connection that I'll come to a bit later about the, the colour of the seats in the House of Lords. So I'll have a wander and a chat. Apparently it was in the uh, 1600s that they first talked about building a crossing for the River Thames at this point. Uh, they, it was needed because the sort of West End was expanding and south of the river. But the watermen who were uh, like ran ferries across the Thames, they were like the taxi drivers of the day. And they opposed it quite strongly. Made comments like, well, if you do that, then if England goes to war, they're not gonna be able to provide seamen because these were very experienced seamen from crossing the river. So there were protests, and via the Corporation of London, they made a, an offer of an interest-free loan of £100,000. That was a lot of money in those days, to King Charles II. It was basically a bribe. Um, he took the bribe, and he refused permission to build the bridge. Oh dear. So a number of years later, and George II was king. Permission was granted to build the bridge. And compensation was paid. £25,000 was paid to the ferryman or waterman, which is about £2 million today. So you can probably see in the background there, there's quite a bit of work still going on on the Palace of Westminster, certainly on the Big Ben Tower. The lamps are quite impressive. They were designed to fit in with the Gothic style of the Palace of Westminster itself. And it is, I, I love London. I am a Londoner born and bred. And it's a pleasure that I've got time now to come up and chat with you about this beautiful city. the um, National Covid Memorial Wall. So this was opened in March 2021, so just a couple of months ago. It's around about a third of a mile long on the embankment here and context. We've got the Palace of Westminster just over there, there the Queen's Speech. And it's quite poignant. These are all hand-painted hearts to reflect the individual nature of those that have been lost. And people have been coming up just while I've been here and writing their commemorations on there to people who lost their lives to COVID-19. Quite free to just come up here. It's just behind St Thomas's Hospital, which is the building there, and I'll uh, I'll talk about that shortly. I read that there, this may be temporary, but there's certainly going to be a garden built at the Olympic Park in East London. Um, but I think there needs to be a lasting memory, and sadly, it's still being added to. People are still dying.
so many touching messages, some simple initials. Some have put the dates on, some it's just a dad or a mum. So yeah, I think there are campaigners already reaching out to make sure that this does become a permanent thing. And I think it's only right. This pandemic has hit so hard. Thomas's Hospital, sprawling building here. I mean, obviously you can't see all of it. Um, but very famous hospital, a lot of innovation, um, teaching goes on there. I think it was the first hospital to introduce the bleep system, uh, first human to human blood transfusion. Richard Dick Whittington visited there once. And he set up a refuge for unmarried mothers. And Thomas Cromwell visited there in 1535. He called it the Bawdy Hospital of Southwark. I think there was some uh, people that were treated there for a certain, let's say, intimate personal disease. And uh, that probably led to Mr. Cromwell's comments. You'll see a new section there behind the trees, behind the wall, and a much older building here see where that actually broke off and a sort of wooden temporary structure built on top of that and then another grand building up here again we're still by the memorial wall St Thomas's Hospital founded in Southwark by King Edward VI AD 1551 it was rebuilt on this site in the reign of Queen Victoria who laid the first stone May the 13th AD 1868 and declared it open for public use June the 21st AD 1871. Detail on those benches, the damage on that one. I have to say it's quite something seeing that memorial uh, and it still goes on. I've walked quite a way down. The majority of them haven't been filled in there was talk that they were going to do some electronic counting, uh, I guess to make sure they had the number accurate. Some special digital thing. Um, not sure if that's going to happen. And we're still near the hospital building, St Thomas's Hospital. And I'm now heading along towards Lambeth Palace. One thing worth visiting, well I say visiting St Thomas's Hospital, uh, there's an old operating theatre known as the Old Operating Theatre and you can visit there in normal times. Obviously Covid times, not sure. Uh, I would imagine they'll be opening up at some point soon. Apparently it's really interesting visit, day out, time out, if you're in London. So behind the buses, is Lambeth Palace, the official London residence of the Archbishop of Canterbury for the last 800 years. Prior to that, guess where it was? Yeah, Canterbury. <laughs> uh, it holds the largest number of records of the church outside the Vatican. It's grade one listed for its architecture and there are elements of this that are like Hampton Court Palace, so very similar design. Classic architecture, there's so much history and I would say beauty in this part of London. And I quite like the square aspect of this, so that's squared off, got the facing stone there. The library, which is here, that's uh, something, obviously that would be part of holding all of those records. There's another London bus, does me no favours. But it's a Magnificent building. Sign over there for the Garden Museum. Obviously anything like that is not open at the moment and hasn't been for some time, but 
I think we're going to see some changes soon which will be excellent. There is to be a new library complex open this year, well 2021 it's due. Like any of these things, check before setting out. So, predominant colours and all that, you can see the Palace of Westminster behind, uh, but there's a reddish tone to the colour, it's more pinky I think, discoloured a bit. And that's because the colour of the seats in the House of Lords is red. I mentioned earlier that the colour of the seats in the House of Commons are green, green leather and red leather. I'm sure there's a tongue twister there somewhere. Uh, but this is the uh, nearest to the House of Lords. The House of Lords, as we look at the Palace of Westminster from this side of the Thames, is on the left, nearest to Lambeth. So, there we go. The riddle of the colour is solved. The other thing you can notice at the top, the pine cones at the top of the obelisks, I believe they're called. Are they pine cones or are they pineapples? There's a bit of a story, there is no reality. There's a bit of a story. John Tredescant, who was a son of a trader, I believe, in Lambeth, apparently grew the first pineapple in Britain, and that's why it is alleged that they are pineapples. Who knows? Maybe we'll never know. So in terms of history of Lambeth Bridge, it's on the site of a horse ferry that took place between the Palace of Westminster over the river and Lambeth Palace on the south bank, hence the name Horse Ferry Road, which is the approach road to the bridge. Opened first as a toll bridge in 1862, but there was a lot of safety issues with it and it actually corroded, it was closed to vehicular traffic. Eventually, it was opened up earlier in the 20th century and is now Grade 2 listed, which it has been since 2008. This is the International Maritime Organisation between the traffic. Established in 1948, the first meeting was held in 1959. It's responsible for regulating shipping. Fantastic entrance there. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but fantastic entrance. Um, there are 174 member states currently. Walk as I talk along here because it's got a bit quieter, both from the helicopter. There's the emblem of the International Maritime Organization peeping through the trees. There we go. And next to it, and a very solid building, very symmetrical. More of that to come is the headquarters of the London Fire Brigade. It's like practice tower behind there, you see. Built to last they were. And you can probably make out there the old fashioned carving there in stone. Fireman with the hose. My late granddad was in the London Fire Brigade and he served during the Blitz and it was one shift after another with no break. Horrendous. What nice artwork on the building there. Very grand for what is a functional building. Just a shame about all the scaffold in there at the moment. Heading along the Albert Embankment. That's going to be my crossing point, which is Vauxhall Bridge. Ahead, diving seagull there, a little bit of beach. And this boat on the side here is a cafe. On the River Thames. And there we have a sign of river life. Pulling the containers along, I assume from the Port of London, Tilbury Docks maybe, come all the way up river. London is a great city to visit. You almost, 
other than paying money to get in and if you bring a sandwich and a drink you don't really have to put your hand in your pocket i mean i guess if you're coming here as as a traveler from far afield you'd want some souvenirs we do it um but with this thames walk that i've been doing in this and some other videos that have got a different format i'm trying to show you just what there is to see for free and you get some good exercise uh, on the back of it and i just love this city there's always stuff to see there's always things to learn and we're heading now towards the secret intelligence service headquarters i'm not sure how much filming i'll be able to do there uh, it's mi6 building it's otherwise known as featured in james bond films about three of them i think answers in the comments i'm not sure i can get that close riverside so i'm expecting to walk kind of inland a bit and then meet up at the river at the bridge at Vauxhall bridge and then walk back over i guess i could see as could go as far as i can until they say stop you can't go any further looking like that and there will be some nice views from Vauxhall of some other very famous landmarks a lot of new building going on i think you know you, you visit these cities and you think oh it'd be great when it's finished <laughs> they never finish they never finish that's not the aim they have functional buildings so anyway i'm going to walk as far as i can and see what happens right i've got my answer so i'm going to walk around and uh, see you on the other side <laughs> okay so i'm now walking past the mi6 building the back of it heavily fortified which i'm sure you can see this was opened in 1994 cost of 135 million pounds uh, it was moved from the previous location near the palace of westminster the old building apparently is made predominantly of glass and i had a petrol station below a bit of risk there and also the uh, it, it was always meant to be a classified building and no one was meant to know but it was the worst kept secret because taxi drivers tour guides and the kgb amongst others knew exactly where the headquarters was of the secret intelligence service so this is mi6 which is the uh, foreign intelligence building it's a magnificent structure a lot of glass much of it triple glazed for obvious reasons and many of the uh, key buildings are underground there's lots of corridors and stuff i haven't been accosted yet so what i'm doing now is heading up past the building over there waiting to be swooped upon so heading up now to Vauxhall Bridge a lot of apartments being built here very very high spec you know overlooking the Thames I would shudder to think at the price tag of such humble abodes and I guess these are you have a place here and you have a place elsewhere I wonder if I'm allowed down here I almost don't want to try I've done well so far I might be inviting trouble no. so you can kind of see there the building grand structure being referred to a kind of Mayan Aztec type of style We'll get a better view of it in a minute so hope you can see as well as towers galore apartments galore 
there are the chimneys of the Battersea Power Station which is being completely renovated. Iconic London landmark. We do something about that one day. I don't know how close you can get to it because as I mentioned earlier much of London is a construction site. So I shall sneak a peek. Always use those if someone gets in trouble. I think what they're building there is a big kind of proper walkway. You know, I couldn't get through the other side of this where it says, uh, well, you may not see it, Dartmouth TMS Sea Voyager. Uh, but that's the building. That is the MI6 headquarters featuring in the James Bond films and um, all sorts of activity. I actually read the other day that there was a proposal made fairly recently to merge MI5 and MI6 staff, operations I suppose you would call it, isn't it? That's the term, operations, and house them somewhere else, which is a bit weird because they paid 135 million for that. And since COVID, people are businesses and individuals. We're doing things differently already, even though we're not fully out of it. Whizzing by on electric scooters over Vauxhall Bridge on a Tuesday morning. So heading over now towards Millbank. Yeah, I mean, just get an idea. Yeah, just so much building work going on. Residential. I've also read that they're talking of converting city offices to residential. You now you've got the structure, the shell of a building. Who's that? Hold, hold tight the camera. Uh, so yeah, things are going to change. Things are going to change. Hopefully for the good. And the view back. Where I just walked, so MI6 building. Hope those police aren't coming for me. And then heading back towards Lambeth Palace. Obviously the Maritime Organisation, Fire Brigade, and so on. So after all the uh, shenanigans of the Queen's speech, I decided to take a walk through the streets of Westminster. And I'm heading now down Strutton Ground, where there's all sorts of street food options. I honestly don't know if I've ever been here. I know of the road, Strutton Ground. Popular with workers. Getting their sandwiches. All Covid safe. Again, mixed architecture. Grafton Arms. I don't know that from. I know it because there's an out west. Part of my history. So you never quite know what you're going to find, do you? So Winston Churchill spoke here at the former Caxton Hall, 1937 to 1942. Beautiful architecture again. That looks like Queen Victoria and Prince Albert. But don't take my word for it. How's that for stunning architecture? Soldier just walked by. Crown Prosecution Service building. Thank you for coming with me. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've had a great walk. Uh, my journey wasn't too interrupted by the fact that the Queen decided to... No, by the fact that there was a Queen's speech today. Uh, I didn't realise. I uh, should have checked more closely. But it's been a great day. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And stay tuned for my next one.